Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. Well, this is one of my newest typewriters. I got it just last Saturday at the ABQ type-in that we had at the Special Collections Library. This is one of two typewriters that was given to me. There was actually quite a few people that were interested in selling or getting rid of their typewriters, and I really don't have room for too many more, but this one and its companion typewriter, which we'll cover in another video, I did take because they're interesting to me being electronic daisy wheel typewriters of fairly recent vintage, and also they're not really that big. This is a Brother SX4000. This was manufactured in 1997, which makes it probably, without a doubt actually, my newest typewriter. This is an interesting machine, and I've been using it for the last few days. It uses, of course, a correctable liftoff carbon film ribbon cartridge and a spool of liftoff correction tape. The ribbon cartridge is in good shape. I've been using it, and it came with a spare new ribbon cartridge, so I have two cartridges. But the correction tape in the machine is totally dried out. The sticky surface is totally hard. It's not lifting off and making any liftoff correction. So I have ordered a couple of replacement correction ribbons for this typewriter. But in the meantime, I've been using it without the built-in correction feature. And I thought it would be fun to go ahead and talk about the features of this machine and really talk about the place of electronic daisy wheel typewriters in the typosphere because these happen to be the last remaining new typewriters built of any quality and they do put out a high quality imprint so I think it's worth talking about stay tuned this is not my first daisy wheel typewriter I currently have a Nakajima made Olympia branded daisy wheel typewriter that's called the Olympia Report Electronic. It was made in the mid-1980s, and it's much bigger machine, much heavier. That wasn't my first Daisy Wheel typewriter either. I had a Smith Corona SE100, a very basic, no-frills, dark gray, plastic wedge-shaped Daisy Wheel in the early 1980s. So let's look at the specifications of this brother, keeping in mind that brother made a whole family, probably hundreds of different models of typewriters, electronic typewriters over the years with different feature sets, right? So the specs on this, it'll take up to a 12.87 inch wide sheet of paper so you can use it in landscape orientation with US letter size paper and also A4 paper. So it has a typing line capacity of nine inches. The typing speed is 12 characters per second and it has an adjustable type pitch of 10, 12, or 15 characters per inch. And the 10 character per inch, you can get 90 characters per line since it's a nine inch typing capacity. In the 12, uh, character per inch mode, you can get 108 characters per line, and in the 15, you can get 135 characters per line. There are 46 character keys, 96 characters total. Line spacing is one, one and a half, and two. There's a keyboard memory of 48 characters. It has a one line or 383 character correction memory. You can have up to 12 tab stops, including decimal tabulation, which is kind of cool. The LCD screen, I was going to say LCD display, but that's like liquid crystal display display, redundant all over again. It is one line by 16 characters, so kind of similar to a thermal typewriter in that sense. It will do up to four carbon copies plus your original. It takes the model 1230 or 1030 correctable film cartridges, and according to Brother, they used to make also nylon ribbon cartridges, the model 1032, and of course the multi-strike cartridges were model 1031. I think the only cartridges now you can get are the correctable film kind. And it uses liftoff correction tapes also in a little spool. The dimensions are 16.4 inches by 15.1 inches by 5.3 inches, and it weighs 10 pounds. Well, in its stored position and carrying position, the paper support panel on the back folds around and clips into place to cover the keyboard. And there is a fold-out 
handle on the back so you can basically pick this up and carry it just the way it is it's sort of self-contained and it's only 10 pounds which is actually fairly light for a typewriter so the other thing i kind of like about this by the way is the power cord you, you roll it up and stuff it in a little compartment back here and i actually really like this this is a very handy way of storing a cord. The Smith Corona Sears that you'll see in another video, it has a funky wrapping system and it's real fiddly. You have to wrap it just right to get it in there. With this one, you can just quickly spool it up and stuff it in the slot and you're good to go. And we'll plug this in like this. We'll lift off the keyboard cover and you just rotate it around 180 degrees and you fit it up here and now it's your paper support. The power switch is on the left side toward the rear and the machine will reset itself like that when you power it up and also there are factory settings that it reverts to when you turn off the power. So if you have special settings you like to set it to, you'll have to reset your settings after you've power cycled it. So when you first turn the machine on, it's going to revert to 10 pitch, single line spacing, and the word spell feature will be turned on. The word spell basically will beep at you annoyingly if you've typed something that it think isn't a valid word according to its 70,000 word dictionary. So I turn off the word spell feature, which you do by holding the alt key and pressing the blue word spell, which is above the plus minus symbol like that. And now the word spell is turned off. There are some other settings that I prefer to set this machine to. So first of all, I'm gonna be using some half size sheets of paper. I use this for blogging, so it has narrow columns. This is a used sheet, but I'm just gonna feed it in here. So I know where the printing position or the left margin is currently at, because it starts with the left margin right here. And I'm gonna set my paper so that I have a short, maybe half inch left margin. You can adjust that later. So what I do is I feed the paper in using the paper insert mode. So that's code and paper insert. It centers the carrier and it feeds the paper in and then you have to hit a carriage return. It goes back to the left margin. I can look at my left margin and I can decide if I wanna keep it where it's at or change it. And I think right now, currently the left margin is fine, but if you wanted to change the left margin, you're gonna to have to go to Alt Margin Release, which is Alt 3, and go back step, or backspace to, if you wanna make a shorter margin or space to the right, hit a, a wider margin and then you hit Alt, Lmar, which is the four key, and that will set your left margin. I like to set a very narrow right margin. So I'm going to go over here and I set it to within one character of the right edge of the paper and hit Alt Rmar, and that sets the right margin. So there are a few other things that I like to set for this typewriter to make it usable. One of the things is there is something called a view mode. So you can't really see it too well right here, but the carrier blocks part of the line that you're typing normally. And so there is a mode you can get into called the view mode, which will back roll the paper a half a line when the typewriter is idle for a second or two, so you can see the full line. And you get into that mode by pressing code and view, which is on the M key. So now that's the view mode. You might have noticed the paper jumped up a half a line, so we're in the view mode. I want to set a indented tab for indenting paragraphs. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna hit Alt T set. So that's my indented paragraph, right? So I have a tab for my paragraph indentation. And then we have to set it to the operating mode. And there are three operating modes. When you first turn the machine on, the operating mode will be printing mode, manual return only. This means as you type, it immediately prints the characters and it will not automatically return the carrier when it reaches the right margin. You have to do it yourself. The second operating mode is when you press the Alt key and the Operate button, it goes into this Auto Operate mode with the up arrow indicated here. In this mode, it is also manually printing 
directly as you're typing, but it will automatically return the carrier in the hot zone if you type a space or a hyphen. And then of course the third operating mode is the line by line operating mode indicated by the down arrow. And now you'll see the little flashing box indicating it's waiting for characters to be printed. This mode is also called the display mode or line by line processing. By the way, you can index the paper up or down using the reverse and the index green keys with a code key. These are half line adjustments, by the way. So if you want to go up a full line, you have to hit reverse twice and uh, like that. And now you're ready to type. Well, in the line by line print mode, when I start typing, the letters show up on the LCD screen, while at the same time the print carrier is moving for the same number of spaces that I'm typing for. So it buffers the display, and you can do corrections like I'm just doing right now. You have also the capability of doing word out. So if I hit word out, I can delete that entire word. And if I hit it again, I can delete the space. And then again, I can hit the next word deleted. You can also do L out with the green code key here. You can delete the entire line. So it buffers. And then when you get near the hot zone, the text, it'll beep at you. And if you type a And if you type a space or a hyphen in the hot zone, it automatically does the carriage return and starts printing what that previous line was typed in the display. You can, while it's printing the line, you can continue typing, but you have only 48 characters to do so before the buffer stop. So this enables you to <laughs> create error free text provided you watch the LCD screen as you type. Okay, that is line by line mode and it actually works pretty good to ensure error free typing. So I just finished uh, typing a three-paged blog article. I was doing uh, some editing of my rough draft and I discovered that the, the paper holder makes a really great document holder. Uh, so I have just a bulldog clip holding my rough draft to the paper holder and with this narrower size, half size paper, it works really well as a built-in paper holder or document holder. So that was kind of surprising. Well, the big question, of course, comes down to how do I like using this? Because these are very controversial machines, let's admit it. I tend to divide the typewriter community into kind of two categories. There are the people that come into typewriters mainly because they like antiques or mechanical objects and tinkering with them. And then there's the other part of it where people come into typewriters more because they like to write and they want to write directly to paper with a mechanical device or something better than handwriting. I think my history of it is I came into typewriters from the latter. I was more interested in writing initially, and I've learned to be a tinkerer. So I think from my perspective, I'm a little bit more ecumenical when it comes to typewriters. I think I'm a little bit more open-minded than some people might be because, you know, you guys know from watching this channel that I've embraced thermal typewriters. And this is similar in the sense that they're not as small as a thermal typewriter, but they have some of the same characteristics and features, right? 
This is also obviously the newest typewriter in my collection and it is very representative of the kinds of daisy wheel electronic typewriters that you can still buy today. So of course Swintech still sells typewriters. I believe their components are made by Nakajima. You can also find Brother and other similar typewriters on Amazon being sold new. I don't know if they're being manufactured currently new or if they're new old stock, but they're being sold new. So this is very representative of the kind of typewriter still available. I don't really know if the SX4000 is available new. The question I had though was regard to print wheels right? The daisy wheels themselves. Well, it turns out, according to one source I found, Brother don't actually make new print wheels or any print wheels anymore, except for what they sell with their new old stock or new machines still being sold. And I found a website called typewriters.com, and they sell replacement print wheels made by Rarotype. And if you remember from Ted Monk's recent blog entry where he was scanning and posting sample catalogs from Rarotype, which is a German type foundry, which has been around for over 100 years probably, they, according to this one website, are the only maker of daisy wheel print wheels. And so I bought a Brother compatible Daisy print wheel. I ordered one in a different typeface. I think it was the script typeface. So when I get that in, I'll be sure to let you guys know the results of that. So this is the Brougham 10 type wheel, though. I also wanted to mention that because you have selectable letter pitch, 10, 12, or 15 characters per inch, you can set, in the case of this 10 pitch wheel, you can set it to either 10, 12, or 15, and I've made a type sample of that for the accompanying blog article for this video. I think the 12 pitch in the Brougham typeface is kind of interesting. It makes it look like a different typeface even though the letters are the same, but the spacing, because it becomes different, it actually makes it almost more readable. You can't really tell from looking at just this type sample, but the letters make, crunch together, make the words shorter, and make them a little bit easier to see in some ways. There's not as much space between the letters. So, I don't know, in some ways it might be more readable. So there's something to play around with. Certainly, the 15 pitch is a little too cramped, <laughs> let's say, for this type wheel, though. I think the biggest question with regards to using this daisy wheel typewriter as a practical creative tool is how does it work? How do you get along with it when you're creatively writing? Because any kind of a writing technology, you want to be able to connect with it in such a way that it becomes invisible to you and you can enter the flow state, which is the state where you're totally in a creative mindset and your mind isn't being distracted with the mechanics of the writing device itself. I'm not certain yet for error-free typing or the fewest number of errors that I've been able to figure out, the line-by-line -line mode where you're buffering your type through the liquid crystal display that produces the cleanest output with the fewest errors, but it's also fraught with the idea that you have to pause after the carriage return starts for it to do its printing of that line. And you can still type while it's printing, but you're not going to be able to see what you're currently typing in the display until it's done, and then it returns again and quickly t catches up in the display with what you've typed. So there's this kind of sporadic, cyclic interruption to your flow state with this state of typing. And I'm not sure if it really enables creativity. On the other hand, you have the direct print mode, which is a lot quicker, and the carriage return is just, the carriage return happens, it's quite quick, and then you can continue typing just like with any other typewriter, but it's fraught with the potential of typographical errors, which for me now, now for you, you guys may be different out there, but for me, I've noticed that Type Bar Electrics, IBM Selectrics, these daisy wheel machines, they all have something in common for me, which is the keys are very light. It doesn't require much pressure to activate them. And as such, it's kind of too easy to misstrike a key and cause an error. If I want to not use the line by line mode and use direct typing. I think to be as error free as possible with this machine and to get into more of a flow state, I have to kind of find a writing position for my arms and hands, my forearms, so 
I'm not resting my hands on the keys too heavy, kind of supporting my forearms a little bit with something comfortable. And then do very careful two-fingered or multi-fingered typing, but not really touch typing. And probably looking at my fingers as I do so. So this is the exact wrong kind of typing style that they taught us in typing class back in the day, which would have gotten us failed a failing grade. But I think for me, preventing errors and being able to stay in the flow state without being interrupted with the line-by-line -line printing thing that happens at the end of the line, I think that's the way to use this machine as a creative tool, at least right now. Now, keeping in mind, I currently do not have a functional correction tape, so having a correction capability, a lift-off correction that's very quick and neat might make me change my mind and I might end up doing more of touch typing. We, we shall see. So these daisy wheel typewriters are type bots. They're typewriters made in the age of and using the technology of robots, essentially. Stepper motors, plastic gears, wiring harnesses, computerized circuit boards. These are type bots that are hand operated. And so they're different than mechanical or manual machines from the age of the industrial revolution. It is an interesting technology and inevitably going forward these will be probably the only kind of new typewriter available that is of any decent quality. And you certainly can't argue with the quality of the print that these things make. When they're working, when the ribbons are working properly, they put out a spectacularly clean print just like an IBM Selectric. Perhaps even better than a Selectric because I've seen spacing issues with Selectrics with the type element ball not turning properly. I'm pretty impressed with the lightweight, the small, relatively small footprint, and the quality of the typing and the quality of the printing. As far as using it and all that and the kind of loud, plasticky, clanky sound of it, yeah, that's one of the things that uh, I've yet to address and that'll either be by headphones or maybe I can put some kind of sound insulation in here, but it's all plastic. But in the meantime, this has been a Daisy Wheel typewriter video. I can't believe I'm making a Daisy Wheel typewriter video, but here it is anyways. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to have a dialogue with you. Drop a note down below in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps me. Thank you very much. And as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.